Hello everybody, I am Jedi Jack Penguin and welcome back to another LEGO Creator 3-in-1 review. Today we'll be looking at set number 31143, Birdhouse. This set includes 476 pieces, retails for $29.99 when it released January 1st of 2023. Now, at this time, I should have reviews up for both of the Creator January releases. I have had quite the fixation with this theme as of lately. I'm really excited to get some of the March sets even. I think LEGO has been doing such a great job here, and I think it's a lot of fun just to build three different sets in one setting. Getting into the box art design, we continue with that polygon sort of animated style for the background. You get a look at the main build in addition to these two alternate builds, which we'll also see from the very back of the box, the birdhouse, as well as the beehive over here, and then the park bench, which I think are all very strong builds, and I'm excited to take a closer look at them. Included in the box are two numbered bags, each featuring two bags apiece, in addition to our three instruction manuals, one for each alternate build. For the instructions, you see the same style we'll be seeing for the foreseeable future, two smaller instructions for the alternate models, and then our main build of the birdhouse here. From the back of this instructions, get your win guy. Piece count for two pages, quick rebuild the world advertisement. The other two don't feature any of the March sets, which is a little disappointing. Those have already been revealed. For our first alternate build, we have this beehive or this bee house that's filled with plenty of honey, as well as bees buzzing around these flowers off to the side. I also have to note as an alternate build to get a number of extra pieces when you build this that you would use all of within the final model. Starting off with the flower designs, you get a lot of clip piece connections in order to get a lot of the angles. You get two from the very top over here, one off to the side, and we also get one over here. We also get some flowers for your bees to pollinate. Two different designs, we have this one, which utilizes these clip piece connections, which I think are really interesting. I also like getting the spring yellow for the studs. And we have the bottom piece of, I believe, a balloon. And of course, we get two of the four bees that are included for this model. You can see that we have these trans clear one by two tiles to represent the wings. Regular old color scheme that you would see for a bee, other than I guess the building on the side piece could be changed to maybe something yellow or black. I think that would have been nice, but I, it's, it's fine. We also get the printed eyes, the one by ones from both sides. Simple, easy design. Lots of different green pieces. Do have to appreciate getting these leafy pieces in the sand green for this particular build. Now on to the little beehive that's included. We also get another small build for this little pile of honey that's coming out of the spout over there. You get a lot of different slope pieces to round this out. Now for the general design of this little hut, you get lots of building on the side for these giant plate pieces that are then covered up by some tile pieces just to give them a little bit of decoration, except for from the front and the back where you only get these one by six, which are pretty cool to get in that sand blue. Always love getting my sand color, sand green being one of my favorites. Now from the very front of the design, we get this little pump, a little bit of honey coming out with that spike piece at the bottom. Another piece that really isn't too common to my collection is getting one of these like haystack pieces, which is really cool. One of those two by twos, which has the axle connection in the middle. Spinning to the bottom of the design, we get these one by two with the grooves in order to act as the legs for the build. Now, in order to get inside this, all you have to do is simply lift up the very top roof piece. You can see how that's built using some shield pieces, the building on the side, as well as the clip piece connection works very well. Now, looking inside the build, you can see that we happen to get some honeycomb, which is also removable. For the honeycomb, we get a number of these one by two bricks in the translucent yellow. You also get two bees, which are attached with the building on the side, those one by ones with the two studs from each side, which I would have rathered them using the one by ones with only the one stud just because it does look ugly having the other stud from the other side. 
And you can also tell that these bees are kind of like sleeping because we have like the wings folded up from the very back. I think that's interesting how we have the sleeping design and then the busy bee activity design as you see on the flowers. Now the honeycomb can easily be connected to the bottom floor where you get some jumper plates and just plop it in as such. And I also have to point out these two by two corner tiles are really nice to get in that dark blue color. Moving on to the next alternate build of this set, which I think is maybe even better than the last one, we have the park bench that features both a hedgehog as well as a squirrel. You get a little apple and some greenery from the bottom. Just like our last build, we get a number of extra pieces when you build this, as this is not yet the final build of this set, which we'll be looking at next. Starting with the smallest build for this one, we have this very delicious looking red apple. Of course, you get that red color scheme all around the building on this side, and I also really like how they use this slope piece from the very top. I think it works very well. You get a slope piece for the stem in that green color. And from the very bottom, you can see we have these nougat colored studs, which currently only come in the Batman art set. So it's nice to see them come in this set as well. Next up, we have our build for the hedgehog, which is interesting to see at the park alongside this squirrel. It gets some of these clip pieces for the quills, as well as the slope pieces in both the regular and the dark brown get the same eye print that you'll see for the squirrel. And from the very back, you get some of those round two by two plates. And from the bottom, we get, I guess, this dark tan to represent the feet, kind of. And it does work well to center him on the jumper plate that's included on the park bench. Now on to the squirrel. This is probably my favorite build of the two animals, just because I love how they did the cheek using these pieces that were introduced in Lego Dots. Same eye print that you saw for the hedgehog. You get one of those one by ones for the nose. I like how they use the cone pieces for the ears, some little clip pieces for the hands, as well as these other clip pieces down here for the feet. Though probably my favorite part has to be how they did the tail. I really love all the curves in here using a lot of these different slope pieces, especially these ones right here in that brown color. Really nice to get. You get two of those over here. And just a lot of the curves I think really work well. You can move that using the clip piece connection both up and down as you pretend to move this guy around to the park bench. And of course, you do get some anti-studs in order to help connect him to that jumper plate. Now on to the build for the park bench itself. We get a very nice green base here where we have various flowers and just plants and grass in general using some of these one by one decorated studs. We again get those leafy pieces in the sand green, which I really like getting in this set, as well as these, which are, I think, a brand new recolor. Now, as for the bench build itself, it's pretty simple. You get a lot of plate and slope pieces, and you get some jumper plates in order to help place your objects. You get a lot more studs over here for some reason, though this is where they want you to place that apple. Get your clip piece connection in order to adjust the back over here so you can move that back and forth as you please. You also get some chain, which is really interesting. Have to point out this piece in the dark gray is also great to get in a set like this. Works well with your animals just because you get those jumper plates in order to place them onto the situation. Don't you love when you record something and then you accidentally deleted? Well, that's what happened with this part of the video, which is why it didn't release three weeks ago. But anyways, we're on to my favorite build of this set, that being the birdhouse that come with all of these very colorful birds, which LEGO actually went all out and named them in the description on LEGO Shop at Home, so I'll be able to give you all the proper names for them. To start us off, we have the Eurasian Blue Tit that has a combination of blue and yellow plumage. You get a little bit of white around the eyes, there. Same eye print you're gonna see for all of these guys. They all have the same exact sort of building style where I get the clip piece connection for the feet there that you can move. You get that connection using the shield, which I think is a really great use of that piece. You get the clip pieces for the wings and for the back tail feathers. Lots and lots of beautiful colors on these birds. I think this is probably the best of the ones that you get here. Next up, we have the Northern Cardinal or the Red Bird where you get the black around the 
beak area, same sort of building style as we just saw for the Eurasian blue tit. Again, when it comes to, like, to the beaks and the general shaping, though you do get some differences when it comes to the top head feathers, which I think turned out really great. You can see that with a little bit more of those anglings with the slope pieces. Same clip connections when it comes to the feet and the tail feathers and the wings. Next, we have the striped tailed yellow finch, which again is very similar to the Eurasian blue tit in terms of the building style and the beak design. Clip piece connections for the feet and for the wings and for the back tail feathers. I do really love the colors on this one, though it is inaccurate and I think it needs a little bit more brown, at least for the wing area. Moving right along to the European green finch, I think the teal kind of works from the front and the lime green is definitely a good color to get here, though I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of a lighter yellow green on this bird. Of course, that lime green is probably the closest they could have gotten here. But another thing I have to point out when it comes to the design of this bird is when it comes to the beak, we have a different shape using one of those triangular slope pieces. I think that's really cool how they were able to just change out the design, make this an even more unique bird. Clip piece connections for the feet, wings, and tail feathers again. Really happy with how this one turned out. Just a little bit of color swaps would have been nice to see here. And lastly, can't go wrong with a classic house sparrow. I think this is perfect in every way. You get the tan, nougat, and brown all around. Clip piece connections for the wings and the tail feathers and the feet down there. Same design as you'll see for the other birds when it comes to the beak and just the roundness and the slope piece designs and clip pieces and printed eyes. As a whole, the birdhouse turned out really amazing. One thing in particular that I really love about this set is the fact that there are so many different spots in which you can place your birds. From the very bottom, we have another one of my favorite parts of this set, and that is the stand design. This allows this build to stand on its own without any help works to great effect. You can also see there's a lot more tiling off down here as you see we change to a lot more of a studded look as we move up the build. Speaking of the building on this side you can see that we have some regular plate pieces and then we have some with the holes that allow these extra twigs to come out of the end. These have some extra studs in order to place your birds. You can place the middle of their feet there, which also works very well. I like how you can place them in the middle, or you can even just place them on the edge. This design is the same as we move up. You see it two more times where you can place your birds in whatever way that you desire. We also see some little stubs from this side in the very back. And another really cool feature that you see from this side of the build is this little bird swing that has some bird feet. You get those chain link pieces so it does swing back and forth and wiggle around quite a lot. And you also get a few loose stud pieces which is probably the most annoying part of this build just because they fall off a lot when you're carrying it around which obviously if you have this on display there isn't really anything to worry about though that's just something that I have to say as someone who's picking it up a lot. Now up to the very top of the house build. This I think turned out really nice as well. You can see we have a little hidey hole from the front. We'll remove this guy so you can take a look where we have a little teeny tiny baby bird inside the house. It also looks like we have an egg which we'll take a closer look at in just a minute. You also get some clip piece connections from the very side and lots of tiling off. I love how they tile this off instead of leaving it studded like you'll see for the roof. Same situation from the other side. And from the very back, you can see we have a lot bigger of an opening from this side, which shows your interior. Now, in order to actually access this, you can actually move these panels down just to give you a better look and some better lighting. These you can also lift up as they are connected using some Technic connections, though you can really only do one side at a time. As I said, inside here you get that baby bird which is hatching out of the egg. And then we also have another little egg design. As I said, we have like that balloon piece that we saw in the Angry Birds theme and a bit of a nest build in there, which isn't anything too crazy. As I said, really have to appreciate a lot of the tiling off that you see from the very sides. And as we move to the very top of the roof, you can see that we use these Technic pieces, which I'll put another picture up right now to just show you what that looks like. Then you can push through the Technic pinhole to connect everything up and hide in plain sight. 
So overall for $30, is this set worth it? I mean, if you're getting this for the main build of the birdhouse, I definitely recommend it. As for the other two builds, they aren't really anything too crazy to shout about, though they're decent enough. For sure, I think this is the best build of the set. I really love the design of all the birds. They are very similar, though they do have some unique aspects when it comes to some of the beak designs and the color schemes. As for the birdhouse itself, I really love the stand design, how this can actually stand on its own Lego figured out how to make the stand big enough that this would not fall over with such a big thing from the very top of the design. So yeah, that's pretty much all that I have to say for this video. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this set. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't have to upload a new video. So yeah, that's it for now and I will see you next time. Bye!